Hey guys, I got another video for you guys today. So I noticed that my Forerunner um, is having trouble starting um, on a cult start. You know, I would cr turn on the key and it would kind of crank once and then stop, and then I'd have to crank it again and then it would start. Kind of been gambling these last couple of days and driving around with it anyways. Uh, once it goes, it's it you know seems to start fine, but I don't want to take the chance. So what I'm going to do today is change out the uh, starter contacts. You know, it's somewhere in there. You'll be able to see it later. Um, but you can see here, I've already got most of the parts. I've actually been waiting to do this for a while, and uh, you know, I'll share with you guys the, the part numbers. But we've got new contacts for the starter side. And new contacts for the other side, or maybe these are flipped, I don't know. And then I've got a new uh, plunger as well. Um, most people just switch out the, I think it's this one. Um, but I'll verify that for you guys. These are some of the tools I'm going to be using. Um, lots of extensions, ratchets, flashlights, and uh, universal joints and stuff like that. So we'll see how it goes. and. Uh, take you guys along all right guys before you start this job make sure you remove the negative cable on the battery if you don't you may not have a fun time all right that's the first thing you got to do all right let's get to it all right guys so obviously you take off the wheel put it up on a jack stand and I'm also gonna be removing the uh, skid plate to kind of get it out of the way the rear the rear one at least um, and then we're going to remove this fender liner thing in here to get it out of the way. And then we'll see what we're dealing with. Alright, so to get this guy off, you can see I already pulled two off. Just pull it down a little bit and then it just comes off like that. You don't really need to take the clips off. Alright, so the starter right here this guy back here behind this uh, dipstick and this brake line so those are probably gonna have to go so looks like this line is held on by a bolt back here it's probably the same size as this one so let's go ahead and take those off all right guys sorry for the noise in the background there's a fan on it's really hot in my garage. It's about probably 110 in here. I don't know, something crazy. But hopefully you guys can still hear me and see what I'm doing. So I'll just take apart these tens and oh, they're actually they're twelves. Hopefully they're not rusted. Somehow get to the one behind, which I don't know how I'm gonna do that just yet. We'll look underneath and see if I have any uh, access. All right, guys. So found it's easiest to use one of these ratcheting gear wrenches. It's a 12 millimeter. It's, it doesn't have that flex. You don't need a flex, and just take it off this way. Kind of have to do it by feel. You can you can go from underneath. Oh, you can go from underneath on this side back here with a ratchet, but it's kind of a pain So I'll show you just put this in here You can feel the bolt and then Just ratchet it off All right all right guys, so this guy's loose now. I think there's something else holding it up, up top, so I'm gonna go check it out. All right, so, see this clip right here? This is the brake line that goes to the ABS. It just slides off. Let's see. No. 
There we go. So it just slides off of there. Just to make sure you clip it back in later. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is uh, take off the dipstick. And you can see there's a bolt right there. And once you get that off, you can pull this whole thing up and out of the way. All right guys, so we're gonna go after the uh, starter wire now. There was a cap, this one here, that was on top of that connector right there. We're gonna take that off, I believe it's a 12 millimeter. And then right behind it, you see back there, the black wire looking thing. It's kind of hard to see, but there's an electrical connector. It's right there, you can see it. And we're gonna take that off. And I think you can take it off from the front of the vehicle. So over here somewhere. And we're gonna disconnect that. And then we're gonna go off the two bolts that hold on the starter. All right, you guys can see there, I loosened it. it was, like I said, it was a 12 millimeter. And uh, just take it off. It's kind of hard to see. It's not a lot of room in here, guys. But, oh, drop that one. Just like that. And you can pull the connector off. And there you go. All right, guys, got that connector out. So the best way is to move this brake line to the side, hold your hand down like this, can't really turn it, and, or sorry, your right hand. So stick your right hand in there, and then you'll be able to get the tab to unlock it is on the bottom. It's on the bottom of the connector. You just need to push that and then grab it and then pull it. Can't really get it from any other angle. I found this was the easiest, so. All right guys, so there's one of the bolts. It's kind of blurry and out of focus, but it's that guy right there. And the only way to get to it is, it's a 14 millimeter head, and you need to have a lot of extensions because there's not really much room to turn in there. So, this is the bottom bolt. I'm gonna have to get to the top one after, but I've got a 14 deep socket, three, uh, three eighths inch drive. A swivel, put some tape on it to make it swivel less. And then, I don't know, 16 inch or so extension. And then you just stick it up in there. Kind of stops right here at the catalytic converter and it gives you room to turn it. So I've already got it off. Alright, and I'll show you my setup for the top one once I set that up. Alright guys, here's the other setup for getting the other one. There's a short 14 on a swivel. Mm, I don't know, 20 inch long extension plus a little shorty. And you just stick it up in there and I'll show you. It's kind of difficult. That bolt was really tight. Can't really see it, but let's see if I can show you guys. It's right above the uh, exhaust hanger bracket right here. It's right up in there. And there, I'm on, I'm on it right now. And you probably can't see it, but and you rest it up against this catalytic converter, put your socket on there, or your ratchet, and then break it free, and then slam your arm into the jack stand while you're at it. And then, there you go, that's it. All right guys, got the two bolts off, and you can see they're the same size. You can see the starter already kind of fell out. So now comes the uh, fun part of fishing it out. So let's see what I can do. Now one thing I wanted to mention is some guys actually just rotate this. Uh, somehow like this, yeah. And oh yeah, they actually just rebuild it right in here. I mean, bend the brake lines a little bit and see that? I mean, you got pretty good access right here. But I'm gonna see if I can take it out so I can show you guys the rebuild process rather than trying to do it inside the truck. But I just wanted to point out that it is possible to just turn it and rebuild it right here. All right, I'm gonna try to do this. Hopefully, uh, I don't get in your guys' way, but might happen, so let's see. Looks like, um, let me 
we've got not a lot of room in here, guys. Let's see. I'm not gonna be afraid to bend some lines here. Oh boy, it's tight. Maybe this way. went this way a little bit, turned it a little bit, and then it came right out. There she is, nice and warm. One thing probably you should do is not work on this while it's hot. This thing is pretty warm from uh, my little drive earlier. All right guys, got it on the bench and in the vise. I'm gonna take apart these uh, three screws here, bolts. I think they are seven millimeter or so. All right, let's see. Eight. Oh, they're eight millimeters. Grab an extension. Oh yeah, they're loose. Let me grab an extension. Take them all off and see what we got inside. Now, as far as I know, this is the original starter. I mean, you can tell by looking at it, it's super old. And it's never been replaced. So this one here looks like it's holding on this metal bracket for this hose, vent hose thingy looking. I don't know what it is, but just keep that in mind when you put it back. So I think when uh, the auto parts store rebuild the trans uh, the uh, starters, I think all they're doing is just replacing the contacts. But I can't be for sure. If you guys know, let me know. But it feels like that's all they do. Because the motors don't seem like they go bad. It's more the uh, contacts. You'll see they get worn down quite a bit when the uh, you know this truck is almost let's see it's a 99 so it's about 20 years old all right it took longer than it should but okay so there's a gasket in here Make sure you don't lose that. Looks to be in decent shape still. Here's that plunger with the spring. So how it works is um, the starter pushes down and connects the contacts and basically turns the motor. So this plunger, every time it goes down, it pushes on the copper here. And wow, this thing is filthy. Oh wow, this thing is worn down completely. Let me see if I can get a flashlight. So you see in here, there's a groove. So the plunger pushes down on that. And it's like, wears it down. Actually, this one looks pretty... It's worn down pretty good, but it should still be good. And this side is not worn down at all. So let's, let me uh, look at my parts really quick. I want to confirm that I have all the right stuff before I start tearing things apart. So here's the plunger. 
no spring, so I guess I have to reuse the spring. Here's the, uh, well, let me see, let me get this light out of the way. So here's the new one. And the old one. It looks, it looks like the new one, this piece of copper here is thicker. But pretty much the same thing. Same everything. So we'll set that aside. Now, let's see about taking this apart. So this is the stud that connects to the battery of the stud. I left the stud on, or I left the uh, bolt nut on there. Uh, looks like this side just slides off. Like so. Let me see if I can show you guys that. So this was over this side. Just slid it off. It's kind of old, but... Nothing I can do about that. And then let's just start tearing things apart. All right, guys. So this part number here, two eight two two six dash five four three four zero, is um, see this is the, uh, the the bigger contact, and that side goes here. It looks like it matches that one. So that's the side that goes to the battery. Then this other one. Um, 28226-72010 goes on this side here and <clears throat> I checked it out already this smaller contact goes right there so I think we should be good to take it apart all right so I think I'm gonna start on this side first the uh, non-starter wire side take off this uh, nut here and I think it is a 12 so let me go find those tools Yeah, 12 millimeter. Just take note of how everything kind of goes back together. So yeah, you can put it back the same way. So this side is the smaller contact. So let me go ahead and let's open this one up. parts here. Nut first. Wire. And then now it's just a stud. So that one is probably going to be a 14. Yeah, 14. Looks like there's a washer behind it. So let me see here. Some of these parts don't come in the kit, so I gotta make sure I see which one's reusable. So this washer comes with the kit. And I think this nut as well, so. And then we got this cap, which comes with it as well. And then looks like an O-ring. Maybe multiple O-rings. Oh, one O-ring. One on the outside. I kind of pushed it through. And then this cap. 
And on the inside, which I have that. Let me organize my parts here. And then the contact itself. And then the uh, connection inside the housing. And then the bolt. So, let me show you. Okay, so it looks like the only thing we're keeping is that first nut that we took off. Let me show you guys what I got over here. All right, so here are the new parts. And I lined it up the same way as the old ones. So these are here, these four are on the outside, these three are on the inside. And these, this is the only nut that came off originally. That one here we're going to keep. Same four, same three. So we're just going to put it back together in that order. Okay, so first is the bolt. It goes here, and then the contact, which should go like this, and then the this guy here, which kind of keeps everything centered. Make sure that looks right. Yeah. Show you guys. Let me see if I can uh, shine a light in there. So we got the bolt, the connector, and the housing, the contact itself, and then the uh, plastic, um, kind of like a plastic thing, I guess, to prevent it from getting grounded out. And then that's it. You can see there the contact fits nicely in there. And then we're going to put the o ring on. And then the other uh, plastic piece. And I finish it up. O ring, plastic. Uh, no, take note of which side goes where here. The washer and then the bolt. Or the nut, sorry. And then just cinch everything up. Make sure everything is still good in here. All right, it's looking good. And then just cinch it up, not too tight, since it is plastic. All right, it's getting tight right there, so it should be good. This guy back on, and then put this nut back on. Let's see, what I want to do is clean this connector a little bit since it does look a little corroded. So let me do that. All right, so everything's all cleaned up. Just took some sandpaper and cleaned it off. Put this guy back on since mine fell off. It's kind of ripped a little bit, but. It is what it is. So let's see. Put that guy on there. Cleaned off this uh, nut as well. And just put that back on. 
That one's a 12 millimeter. You don't want to crank on these too hard because they are copper lines. Okay, that one's moving on me. Just snug is good. So that side's done, and then we just do the other side now. Alright guys, so this one's going to be fairly the same thing, except on the other side obviously. So, remember there was a stud on here that connects the starter wire, so I took that off already. And then this one looks like it's a 14, let me see, it is. It looks like um, this piece goes here. And you see this recess circle here? It goes on the other side of the housing. I'll show you guys that in a second. It's not that tight, so it shouldn't be that tight. You don't want to break your uh, copper. <clears throat> Alright, so we got nut. Well, first we got the, uh, the wire and then the nut wires in the uh, in the vehicle so let's see how do I take this off maybe pry a little bit yeah oh there it goes all right so there's a washer in here it's just dry rotted um, so here you can see let me move the camera for you all right so it's kind of dry rotted on so I had to pry it out a little bit but there's a washer in here there we go, that's better. Let me pull it out slowly. I don't want everything coming out yet. So there's this washer, and then this plastic thing, and then there's this circular thing in here, which maybe it stays there with it. Let me see. Yeah, okay. So the washer inside of here, and then the this guy. I got a second. Let me make sure I got all my parts here. Old versus new. Okay, and then same thing, O-ring again. Oh, it looks like two O-rings on the outside here. Small one, big one. This one looks like it went around the uh, the uh, circular thing. Let me show you really quick here. Probably went around this guy. So I'll probably put that on there. <clears throat> and then let's take a look on the inside here now since everything is kind of coming out now. We got, let me put this light down. Oh, no connector on this side, but we got the uh, the plastic thingy that goes against the housing, and then we got the contact itself, which looks like it's stuck onto the bolt, um, and then the bolt. All right, so that's how we're gonna put everything back together. And for some reason, my kit came with a. Uh, an extra piece of paper. I don't know what this is for. Who knows? I'm not going to use it. All right. So let's see here. Let me show you guys my parts real quick. All right. So there's the bolt and the contact. This went inside the housing. So to this, and then the O-ring for this guy. Another O-ring on the outside. The washer and then the bolt. And then here are all the new parts. Came with everything you needed. Same thing, same thing. And then this is the old uh, nut. So we're gonna go ahead and assemble it. But first I'm gonna clean the housing with brick clean and then I'll put it all back together. All right guys, first up is the bolt and the contact. So, looking at this bolt, it looks like this. And hmm, this contact is actually smaller, just slightly. 
but it's got the same uh, curve. So just put it in like that. Oh, I got the plastic cap. Kind of keeps everything centered. And look, as you tighten it, this thing actually has some uh, kind of like your lug nut studs. It gets pressed in, which is interesting. All right. And then, let's see. Let me make sure this goes in all the way. There we go. So like that, it's inside, and then no ring. And then, remember earlier I mentioned this, so I think this goes around here. It looks like it does, yeah, fits perfectly, so. Let's do that before you put it on. And then, let me show you the back side real quick. So you see here, there's like a little notched out hole. That hole lines up with this hole. So when you put it on it, can't do it wrong. This guy with the uh, with the new O-ring on the outside, make sure it lines up with that hole I mentioned earlier. Just push it down, kind of holds in place. The washer, and then the new nut. And then just tighten it all up, 14 millimeter. And on this side, remember that stud looking thing I was saying? It should press itself in. Yeah, it is quite nicely. Once you get tight, just snug it. That should be good. And that should be it. This will stay on here. Once we put the starter wire back on, it'll go on there. And now, just need to put the plunger in. All right guys, last step is to put the plunger in. So just grab the new plunger, put the spring on. And it doesn't seem to be side specific. I don't know, it fell off. Well, let's put it in there and let's just push it down and make sure that the contacts are touching both sides, which they are, so that should be good. So now we gotta put the plate back on, the back plate. This guy here, and that should complete the rebuild. All right, so I'll just put this plate on, make sure the gasket's still on there. Start a couple of these bolts. Another eight millimeters. the annoying one and this one remember has a little hook for the uh, power wire here and just put it all together probably would have been better to use a quarter inch eight millimeter but too lazy to walk over there right now cool well I'll tighten that up and uh, get it back in the vehicle all right guys it's time to go back inside and uh, put this back in so I don't remember how I got it out but let's see if I can figure it out say it was this way but I don't really remember. Turn. 
I think it can fall, so. All right, just back in. I need to rotate it this way. There we go. And just be careful not to break that connector in there. And then we just gotta stick it in here and wiggle it a little bit. Probably would have been smart to uh, grease that gear. Let me get some grease really quick. All right. Some random synthetic grease. No clue what it's for, but don't think it matters. Some grease is better than no grease. I know you guys can't see, but I can't either. I'm just gonna grease the splines a little bit. Right there. Because why not? Let's see if we get a bolt started. Yeah. See if I can clean this surface a little bit. Get to the top one from the back. If you got small enough hands, you can get to the back. Oh, it started. So if you have small enough hands, you can fit back there and get one bolt started. Alright. So it's almost in. I'm going to get the other bolt from the bottom and then tighten everything up. Plug the connector back in and I think that should be it. I don't think I need to show you guys that. Just put the dipstick back in. Put the brake line back on. Connect the battery. Put the brake line on top back in as well. And that should be it. All right guys, I got the starter all snugged up using the, uh, you know, the crazy extension stuff that I had earlier. It was a lot easier to put back in than to take off, I'll tell ya. Um, you actually can reach from underneath here to start the bottom bolt. And then right here behind this exhaust, you can uh, start the top bolt and then everything should be good to go. Um, if you want, you can use a pry bar right here to kind of hold the starter up to kind of align things. I need to do that for the bottom one anyways. And then just stick your hand back in, plug the connector back in, and then hook up the starter wire. Don't forget to put that plastic cap back on. And then from there, just reassemble everything that you took off. So the dipstick, which to be honest is a pain in the butt. Um, and then the two brake lines, which to be honest is a pain in the butt as well because my car is kind of rusty and it was, you know, one turn at a time, literally, it took forever. Um, and then on the top, I remember that brake line had that, the, uh, the clip up there, so make sure you reattach that as well. Put the dipstick back in and you should have a fully rebuilt starter. So let's go ahead and reconnect the battery and then see if it fires up. All right, let's reconnect the battery and hope nothing blows up. Which I didn't, so that's good. And then let's uh, start her up and see if she starts. All right guys, we're gonna do the first startup test and see how she purrs.
success. So, if you guys like my video, give it a thumbs up. If you guys want to see more repairs, subscribe. And uh, if you guys have any questions, leave a comment. I'll see you guys later. All right, so I wanted to give you guys a little bit closer look at these contacts. You can see, you know, originally it was about, I don't know, one eighth inch thickness. And right now, I don't know, it's pretty small and thin, one sixteenth maybe. Maybe I'll take a measurement for you guys. And then for this one, this side didn't wear down at all actually. You probably don't even need to buy this side to be honest. If you just clean up the contacts right there, maybe, you know, just polish it up with a uh, sandpaper or something. You could probably reuse that. Plunger, I think seems to be in, you know, okay shape. I don't see why you need to buy a new one of these. I mean, maybe just clean up the contact surface. And it'll be good, but I mean, if you took apart everything already, you might as well rebuild the whole thing. So, that was that. All right guys, so I wanna take a measurement for you guys see here the original thickness of this uh, contact it's about 2.6 millimeters maybe 2.5 sorry 2.57 to 2.6 millimeters in thickness let me see over here yeah and then the worn down part it's about 1.23 you know, 1.2-ish. So, I lost over half just from wear and tear from uh, 20 years of starting the vehicle. So, you know, this is one of the reasons why your starter stops working. Once this thing goes all the way thin, or, you know, see how it's like kind of corroded and dirty, it doesn't get a good contact. But, yeah, that's all you have to do to replace it, pretty simple.